Welcome back, everyone. In the standard text of the Quran, Surah 33, 6a reads, The Prophet is nearer to the believers than they are to themselves. His wives are their mothers. If Muhammad's wives are the mothers of the believers, then by extension, does that mean that Muhammad is the father of them? Well, there is ample evidence to indicate that's just what some important early manuscripts said. For example, the codices of four different important companions contained such a variant. Now, Muslims, before we get into this, we need to talk briefly about cognitive dissonance. A good example of this is a recent comment on this channel. Hadiths that speak of corrupted Quran fail history and were spread by the enemies of Islam. So this is one option for you Muslims. You can simply reject the evidence that you are about to see because you've been brainwashed into thinking that the Quran has been miraculously preserved. You can say anything that talks about a corrupted Quran is not historical and spread by the enemies of Islam. But think about how many enemies of Islam there would be. Imam Bukhari talked about variants in the Quran, so he's an enemy, as well as those who narrated the traditions he preserved. The same with Imam Muslim, and the same with the four companions that we saw before. More early enemies of Islam would be Caliph Abdul Malik and his general Al-Hajjaj. They were closely involved with introducing numerous changes to the text, while seeking to put an end to disagreements over the consonantal skeleton of the Quran. Al-Hajjaj reportedly removed from the text certain unidentified verses that threatened the interests of the Marwanids. But are these enemies of Islam, or are they devout Muslims who lived long before lies about miraculous preservation of the Quran developed? So. Let's be intellectually honest and take a look at the evidence. Let's compare the standard reading with the variant found in these early manuscripts. A standard reading, the prophet is nearer to the believers than they are to themselves, his wives are their mothers. And the variant reading, the prophet is nearer to the believers than they are to themselves, and he is their father, his wives are their mothers. Other than the codices of the four companions which contained this reading, there's even more evidence. This was one of the readings, according to Qatada and Al-Hassan al-Basri, said that he is their father is the first reading. Umar had some issues with this variant as well. He heard a boy reading it and ordered him to erase those words. The boy said, no, I'm following Ubay ibn Qab's reading. And so the matter was taken to him. Ubay ibn Qab responded, Verily, I've been engaged in the study of the Quran while you have been engaged in buying and selling in the market. Umar was put in his place. Now, memories of this variant show up elsewhere. Mujahid describes in the 8th century and Abd al-Razik in the 9th century. Now, why would this variant have been removed? Well, David Powers gives us a couple of answers. First, the Quranic pronouncement that Muhammad's wives are the mothers of the believers created a bar to marriage between the Prophet's widows and the rest of the Muslim community. So too, any Quranic pronouncement stating that Muhammad is the father of the believers would have created a bar to marriage between the Prophet and all female Muslims. And as we know, given the number of Muhammad's wives, this simply wasn't an option. But there's a second reason, and that is to erase the glaring contradiction in Surah 33. From verse 6a, the Prophet is their father, and from verse 40a, Muhammad is not the father of any of your men. Now, it's very important that Muhammad isn't the father of anyone. The Quran teaches that prophethood is hereditary, and if Muhammad had a son who reached puberty and outlived him, then Muhammad wouldn't be the last prophet. Now, in Muhammad's day, there were plenty of self-proclaimed prophets before, during, and after Muhammad's time, and so it was very important for the early Muslims to show that Muhammad was not the father of any of their men. Let's go back to Surah 3340. Muhammad is not the father of any one of your men, but the messenger of God and the seal of the prophets. Now, the association of the seal and the prophet, it goes back a long way before Islam, and it never indicates the end of of a prophetic line. It simply refers to confirming what came before it, which is, of course, a very common theme throughout the Quran. Jesus confirmed that which came before him, and Muhammad confirmed that which came before him. The early Muslims needed to revise their texts and fabricate history where necessary to show that Muhammad was the final prophet and that he had no viable male descendants. And that's why it was so important to revise the Quran in Surah 33. It's why it was so important to interpret uniquely seal of the prophets as the last in the prophetic line. Speaking of revising texts, David Powers offers a thoughtful hypothesis. 
Sura 33 is said to have undergone massive editorial changes. 127 of these verses were removed. If they were removed, then five verses surely could have been added. The addition of these five verses to the text of the Quran would account for the contradictions between Surah 3337 and 423 on the one hand, and between 3340 and 336 on the other. The contradictions he's referring to in Surah 423 have to do with this Zayd and Muhammad issue. Again, what we've talked about in this video was just the first of a couple of steps that needed to be taken to solve this problem of hereditary prophethood. After Muhammad repudiated Zayd, Zayd also had to die, and he had to die before Muhammad did. It was up to the early Muslim historians to figure out how to try to coherently fit his death into the Islamic timeline. But the problem of hereditary prophethood didn't stop there, because Zayd, son of Muhammad, had a son himself. We'll probably talk more about this in an upcoming video. But remember to ignore this video because the Quran has been miraculously preserved and any variants, if there were any, wouldn't be significant. They only have to do in this case with Muhammad being the final prophet of Islam. I'll see you next time.